Hi, this is Dr. Nick. I'm the incrementalist here with Incremental Insights for better business, better health. And I'm Fred Goldstein with Accountable Health here working with employers and other companies on their population health and employee improvement programs. So Nick, we've got a new announcement. It's sort of worldwide, scrambling the press, scrambling everybody else. Omicron, what the heck is going on with Omicron? Omicron, the uh, Greek alphabet letter <laughs> that uh, people are confused as to why it's this, why did we miss the other two? Let's not even bother going there. So uh, new variant and specifically a variant of concern. I think one of the things that's important to note here is that there are many variants, over a thousand at least, uh, variations in uh, the virus, uh, it mutates. That's what viruses do. If you weren't aware of that, you should be. Uh, I think we've all learned lots of things about uh, healthcare viruses uh, and vaccination through the course of this pandemic, but that is the normal progression for all viruses. And the more they replicate, the more opportunity that there is for these uh, variations to take place. Most of them, as you get from the numbers, because we're you know, at a limited number of variants of concern, disappear off because in fact, the change causes the virus to not survive so well. So you know, that's part of um, the, the whole survival mechanism. And it's also a balancing act because if you become too lethal, you kill people before you can spread. And you know, I, I don't mean to diminish the impact that this has, but you know, it's really quite the scientific process. This variant of concern has multiple changes, particularly in that spike protein. That's the little thing that pops out in all the images that you see. And at least one, and perhaps some more, appear to be better at binding to the ACE2 inhibitor, which means that it potentially infects cells more. We've seen it in certain countries, it's given this uh, alphabet, uh, gr Greek alphabet letter. And at this point, I would say we don't know enough to be able to determine what this is going to do in terms of the pandemic and the future. Unfortunately, that's not been the case, Fred, right? We've seen uh, what I would call uh, some reactive or overreactive responses, and not just here in the US, but around the world. Yeah, I think as, as you're talking about it, you know, this whole idea of you immediately saw countries shutting down traffic from specific countries, particularly those eight, I believe it was in Africa, including South Africa, where this was identified. And even to the point where Japan actually at one point shut down for the next 30 days and said, don't write any more tickets. And they have now reversed that back a little bit. It's just interesting to watch this sudden response. And you said it's a bit early. I think people are beginning to recognize that it's more transmissible. Now the question becomes, where is it on that severity index? And that's, and that's the key point that people are looking at with some people saying it looks like it'll be less, a few, maybe not as many saying it might be more, but we just don't know yet. As well as, you know, this whole idea, and you could probably touch on this a bit, Nick, which is the effectiveness of the vaccine or potential other treatments. Yeah, so uh, let's talk about uh, that uh, as well. But I want to just talk about the transmissibility. If it's not more transmissible, it typically doesn't become a variant of concern. I mean, you, you would have it become a variant of concern if it was more lethal. But mostly what happens is it tries to spread faster. So that would be an expectation. When it comes to the effectiveness of our vaccines, as much data as we have today, and there's currently an awful lot of work of people focusing on this, and we have lots of different ways. Obviously, the best way is to look at real world data. So what happens in real people as opposed to in the Petri dish or in a test tube in the laboratory? And they're doing that because what we do is we take um, the... the uh, results of a vaccinated individual and the antibodies and see whether that imposes some effect on the virus in a test tube or in you know the laboratory setting. So far, it would appear, as we expect with most vaccines, that they are still effective at doing what their primary job is, which is preventing severe disease and death. I think everybody has gotten to the expectation of 
vaccines are 95% effective and anything less than that is unacceptable. Well, that's not the case. If you've had a flu vaccine and had flu in the past, that's normal uh, progression, but you were probably prevented from having very severe flu if you did get your vaccine. The same is true with COVID. Yeah, it's really interesting. And speaking of vaccines, there was a fascinating story that we routed around today. I believe it was in Italy. Is that right? Oh, and my maybe God. You can I, introduce I just, you know, this. It's brilliance I, in action. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I'm not sure I would have selected <laughs> that term, but I got to say it made me laugh. Apparently, an Italian uh, gentleman trying to avoid the vaccine mandate um, did so by having a fake arm. <laughs> which uh, you had to be, a, I, if you don't work in Hollywood, um, and even if you do, I've got to imagine that that would stand out a little bit, but I, I, I admire uh, the innovation. It, it does send a, a question to people, if that's how extreme people are in terms of their resistance, we're not doing a good job explaining. So, you know, joking aside, that's a problem. But I do admire innovation. I always do. You've got to respect it. But I don't think it works. Yeah, it was it was fascinating to read the story about how the individual discovered it. Well, the color was a little bit off. It didn't couldn't find any veins, etc. So it would be interesting to see. Another study we should do is perhaps what percentage of people giving vaccines would recognize an artificial arm. Could you slip through with one or 2%? I don't know. <laughs> I, are we going to see a large number of people doing, uh, maybe we'll do a double blind crossover trial with <laughs> you know folks lining up and some have got false arms. I, actually, quite honestly, I'd like to see it. I'm curious about the, uh, the, the innovation around this, but uh, joking aside, obviously, you, you know that's not the pathway to uh, success. Vaccines are definitely in the future of uh, combating Omicron. We see that very clearly as we've seen with all of the other uh, vaccine uh, instances and the variants. If you're vaccinated, much less likely to get it and less severe disease and certainly uh, less uh, likelihood of death. Although you are still going to see some death in people that have ad additional comorbid conditions, but get vaccinated, primary uh, defense against this. Yeah. And, and, uh, just touching on another point that we've discussed with some of our clients is look at this like Delta. If you're doing certain things to keep yourself safe in certain situations where you need to potentially wear masks, vaccines, obviously critical, but consider it that way. So thanks again so much, Nick. It's another fantastic week. This is Fred Goldstein with Accountable Health. If you'd like some help with your population health improvement programs or with COVID, please reach out to accountablehealthllc.com. And this is Dr. Nick. I'm the incrementalist here with Incremental Insights for better business, better health.